Yes. Alrighty. Are we going? Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Craig Dowdle. Craig is a licensed electrician with Universal Electrical Services. Not only do they service the usual commercial, industrial, and residential facilities, they also offer thermal scanning of electrical infrastructure, preventative maintenance contracts, Google Nest Pro installation, and electric vehicle charging stations. Craig's responsive and professional approach to electrical contracting means he also thinks outside the box to look at alternative options to solve problems which has benefited him throughout his life. An ideal referral includes facilities managers, commercial or residential property managers, HVAC companies, and restoration companies. Craig has a deep interest in music, audiobooks, writing, voice acting, and has a goal of producing his own podcast. Can't wait to hear that. The greatest accomplishment in his life so far has been raising healthy and happy children as they are his world. So let's hear what Craig has to tell us today. Awesome. Thanks so much, Corinne. Great introduction. And uh, thanks, everybody, for listening to my presentation. I guess we can move along. Corinne already did everything for me. We are actually going to have some fun today, and it's participation involved, if you're up for it, the challenge. <laughs> We're going to do like a little electrical safety quiz, and I'll kind of chat with you about it. So uh, as you guys know, I'm uh, not a big fan of DIY or destroy it yourself, as I call it. Um, and so most of these were, were things that we've been called out to inspections for that people found in their home or did in their own home, which are massive code violations or are dangerous or are just not, uh, not something that we want to see in homes. So my main focus with this, of course, I'm not trying to scare anybody or tell you that you're incapable of doing things. It's not my approach at all. It's more of a, if you don't know what the situation looks like inside your walls, what kind of potential damage could you be doing? You know, if you, if you don't understand electrical, so we will dive in. Can anybody tell me what is going on here? A fire about to start. Just a little bit of the heat anyway. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. It's a very old wiring. Was it called T tube and knob or something like that? No, then... not quite. No. So what I'll tell you that's happening. And yes, of course, we're seeing that uh, one of the wires there is kind of burning up a little bit. But what, sort of where this issue comes from is that uh, there's actually two wires under that same lug or same kind of nut there, which uh, is not okay call that like double lugged um you're not supposed to have that that's actually a big no-no uh and partly because now you've got two wires that are conducting electricity so close together uh, and electricity operates via pressure so um what causes that to, to happen there is then you're getting too much pressure too much power running through that so you can experience some uh some burning like that so that's a big no-no and uh, we see a lot of people that do their own home electrical or perhaps you know electricians that are not actually a truly verified or uh, licensed electrical company doing this kind of thing it's also quite common in older homes so if you've got a home from like the 80s and earlier uh, you do tend to see this kind of stuff so kind of a, a couple unfortunate things happening in this picture but um, definitely some stuff that you know when we open old older homes and panels we see a lot of this type of scenario going on uh, and it's a big urgent fix luckily this is a relatively easy fix though um, and no further damage is done but you know if you open that up and you don't really know what you're doing that can be kind of where you run into some trouble so Craig can oh can I just ask a question on that last picture yeah where where is that exactly is that in the fuse box is that in a where would you find that yeah that's in their panel how about this photo here <laughs> this is probably a tough one <laughs> i think that the colors uh -huh. don't match mm. it looks like spaghetti yeah <laughs> So this is actually tricky. Uh, and again, you know, it's one of those things that unless you are a certified electrician, you're probably not going to catch it. So this is a, this is the bo a junction box for a light fixture that's installed into a ceiling. And it's actually ungrounded. 
So there's no grounding wire in there, which means that, um, you know, th that device is just, it's not being grounded. I always say grounding is the most important part of your home. Um, it's taking any of that excess electricity that comes into the system and putting it as fast as possible down to the earth so that you don't get shocked or your devices don't get damaged. So um, again, it's the same thing. This is the kind of situation where people can potentially get hurt or devices can potentially get ruined if you don't know what you're looking at uh, or working with. So does anybody know what's going on here? It's a terrible photo, unfortunately, but you know, wires lying across wood in the attic not yeah. an insulator Insulate. yeah in the insulation yeah so even worse this is actually knob and tube wiring the dreaded knob and tube wiring that's laying directly on insulation uh, which is a huge concern because essentially the way knob and tube works is it's not insulated wire like we use today knob and tube disperses the heat that's generated by the wiring just freely into the air and so when people do renovations and upgrades down the road and don't realize this, a lot of the time they're blowing insulation up into their attic uh, and things like that. And then it's, it's landing in contact with these wires, which again, can be a hazard, right? It can be an electrical hazard. Um, this I can see a couple other building code violations in there too. <laughs> I was going to say this, this particular house was Ugh. a very 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 large job <laughs> uh, it was a very significant rewire as well as significant work for other trades for some structural um they had asbestos and vermiculite they had lots going on uh, in this place and so thankfully it's now a beautiful safe and functioning home and uh the new buyers of it are hopefully going to be happy and healthy in that place for a long time how old is um how old is that house when when that picture was taken uh like 1920s or 1970s no, or? not quite that old i think it was built in the 30s this place late 30s oh how about this one <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see we have unguarded wiring going to a a, a non-appropriate junction box outlet <laughs> Yeah, this one just makes makes me cringe a little in general. Everything going on here is quite quite extreme. Um, is this the same house? No, <laughs> this is actually a different house. <laughs> yeah, this is actually a different place. Um, yeah, this one's bad on so many levels. I mean, just having a surface mounted box like that inside of a house is just not it's not what we do. That's so hazardous in general. Um, but also that exposed wiring, like that's not appropriate wiring to be run along the surface. You can run wire on a surface mount, but it can't just come out of a hole in the wall <laughs> like that. All right. It needs to go into, you know, a proper junction box and then have proper connection points. And then that wire needs to be run in a armored cable that kids, pets, and, you know, other household devices and things like that aren't going to shred and potentially electrocute you. So this one's a big no-no. I cringe how often I see this when I go into people's homes. Um, blows me away. But really, you see this often? Wow. That's crazy. Well, this is the kind of stuff we get called out for, to be fair. So we are getting the more exposure to some of this older electrical that's that's been done in the past. It's just not not okay anymore. So and how about this one? Looks like snakes. <laughs> it's like a really terrible puzzle. <laughs> what is that pipe on the left-hand side? That's pipe. The pipe, oh, yeah, that's that's pretty normal. That's just oh. um, that's just the electrical coming in. That's okay. uh, that'd be looks like knob and tube in a way, but they fix that, no? Yeah, it's so actually, Michelle's actually really on the right track. Um, so this is knob and tube again. So this was actually that same house that had the open in the attic. However, this is worse. So what they did was instead of fully fixing the knob and tube, somebody just replaced the connection points with aluminum wiring, which is also not okay. So this is kind of like a double whammy of bad. Um, so this had aluminum wiring 
as well as knob and tube in the same house. That's a first for me. Wow. So they were on borrowed time, in other words. <laughs> yeah, potentially, right? I, I never like to try to scare people yeah. and say the wrong things. It's not fair to people to just, you know, be the bully or the mean person all the time. But yeah, it scares me when we see that kind of stuff. We stayed yeah. on at this job. We did an inspection and we actually rerouted an entire crew to be here to start the repairs right away. That's the urgency we pushed with that customer and they were they were more than happy. So um, aluminum is dangerous, of course, because how rapidly it expands and contracts compared to copper. So it pushes out of the connection points uh, on the wiring, which is where you get the issue. And then you get essentially wires that are too far apart to maintain a consistent electrical connection. And they do something called arcing, which is what you get basically a sparking uh, and that can that that again is a huge electrical risk in many ways. Um, you can also hear the arcing happening sometimes in your house, you know, with switches and outlets, you can hear popping and things like that. So anyway, that is my fun electrical scare the crap out of you quiz for the uh, for the week here for you. Uh, I appreciate everybody listening in and uh, I hope you know that again this doesn't scare you I don't want uh, people to be afraid of you know the electrical in their home I just want people to make sure that they hire somebody that's licensed to take care of that system for them when they want to do work and you know if they've if they're noticing signs in their house that things are going wrong right flickering lights or things not working don't leave it get it looked at the the small price you're going to pay for for a quick inspection and repair of those things as they go is certainly a lot cheaper than you know potentially dealing with a, a massive hazardous situation so uh, i think we maybe got time for a quick question if uh, anybody has anything craig i have a question yeah um i'm just wondering about the like after you do that wiring, does that save them on like their electricity bill and stuff too? Because I'm thinking that I'm not sure if that's the case. I'm just curious. All of yeah, potentially. Mm -hmm. I I I I wouldn't want to promise that to anybody by any means. Sure. Um, but yeah, you know, there there is the potential there that newer wiring in a more modernized system is going to function more efficiently. Um, but it also depends on the devices you have it connected to mm. your baseboard heaters are 50 years old, <laughs> yeah. you know, they're going to just guzzle electricity compared to the more modernized, you know, energy efficient ones. So yeah, it, it depends really on, on how you, how you're using your system too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Greg, so I know you focused a lot on um, older homes, lots of older issues that we're now learning more about our problems. What if you have a newer home? Should you still get it inspected? Are there still things in newer homes that you find are issues? Absolutely, yeah. We, um, we don't do very much new build construction, like hardly any at all. A lot of renovations, but no no new building of homes. And I can't tell you how often I go to ones and see things that are still being done just cheaply too quickly. And it doesn't last, uh, which is the biggest problem, right? I'm, I think a lot of people know with the way society is now, of course, everything is very disposable. And unfortunately, a lot of our critical systems, even in our homes are being treated that way too. So uh, I always tell people like if it's been two or three years and you haven't had an electrical inspection done, get one done, have, have an electrician come to your home, check out your system. Um, there's a lot of energy and power running through a house, even just a small house. And the thing with electricity is it is based on pressure. That's what electricity is essentially is pressure. And so regardless of how modern and efficient the system is, there's still always that element of pressure that can push connections and things like that. And so in newer homes, that's what I find we do a lot is just tighten connections to make sure that that's not going to become an issue in the next couple of years. So um, if you have a brand, brand new home as well, 
Um, the other thing I always recommend is get an inspection done before you hit the one year mark, because then you can go back to the builder and, you know, assess for any possible warranties. So, you know, again, same thing, the small price you're going to pay for an inspection compared to potentially saving you thousands and, and work down the line is, is uh, worthwhile, I think. So thanks, Karen. Awesome. All right, everybody. I think we will move along. I don't want to